properties of limits. We're going to be talking about these properties uh, throughout um, the different things that we, we study, uh, how derivatives and integrals, they all have different properties. So here are some examples. Now this is going to be a little bit uh, little bit hard to follow sometimes because they use a bunch of letters, but we'll see if we can't get through it. It says, uh, let B and C be real numbers, let N be a positive integer, and let F and G be functions with the following limits. So if the limit of F of X as X approaches C is equal to L, and the limit of G of X as X approaches C is equal to K, then scalar multiple. So basically what it says, if you're taking the limit of something and it has a coefficient, you can actually take the limit of the function and multiply it by that coefficient. So for instance, the limit of, of f of x was l, and it's being multiplied by b, so it's really b times l. Some are difference when you're talking about properties of limits. It basically says if you're taking the uh, sum or difference of two functions, uh, and you're uh, doing the limit process, it's just the limit of each one either added or subtracted based on the original uh, statement there. The product basically means you're taking the limit and you're multiplying together. Quotient means you're dividing the two limits. Of course, the denominator cannot be equal to zero. And of course, a power means that when you plug this in, you're going to get L, and it's just going to be L to that N power. So let's see if we can't look at a couple examples here. Oops. So here's our first example. It says the limit of 4x squared plus 3 is uh, as x approaches 2. Well, to do that, basically what we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, well, using our properties of limits, well, this is a sum. So what we can actually do is we can break our sum up into two different terms. So it's the limit of 4x squared as x approaches 2 and the limit of 3 as x approaches 2. Okay, well, not too bad. Uh, what we can do from there, of course, is we can say... Well, this has a scalar, so what we can do is we can actually pull out that coefficient and just take the limit of the x squared. All right, well, this one's not too bad. We're just going to leave that alone because that's just going to be the limit of a constant. And over here, we're going to say, okay, well, now we can use uh, some of our other uh, our properties from the theorem 2.1 and say, well, we can use direct substitution. So when you plug in 2, it's just going to be 2 squared. Uh, and then, of course, the limit of a constant, well, that's pretty obvious. See, that's just going to be 3. So continuing to do that, you can just simplify it. 2 squared is 4. Nice little order of operations. Thanks, Aunt Sally. So you can see our limit's going to be 19. Hopefully you can see that. Now, of course, um, what you can get is, even though we did it that method and used the properties of limits, we could have easily also done direct substitution. So if you're given something like this, if you can use direct substitution, do it. Uh, we can just plug the 2 in. 2 squared, obviously, is going to give us 4. 4 times 4 is 16. So we're going to end up getting the same thing. Um, sometimes it's very important to know these properties and be able to use them because we can't always use direct substitution very easily in our uh, nice little polynomial here.